Hello guys, Imamel here. Welcome to another chapter of the Know Your Node series. Today we'll be talking about the histogram scan on Uniform. As always, I'm going to explain how it works and show you some examples of how to use it. So let's get started. Let's begin by quickly explaining what the histogram scan does. This will help us understand the non-uniform version a lot better. To explain it, I will connect a clause to noise to the histogram and set all the values to zero. If we go to the node properties, we'll find two sliders and a button. You can think of the first slider called position as a gate. As you increase the value, the whitest part of the cloud noise, as you can see here, start to appear. And this happens all the way up to 0 0.5. At that point, the image in the histogram will be the same as the input, in this case, the clouds to noise. Now, if we keep increasing the value, the image begins to clamp on the white side, as you can see here. And at one, it becomes full white. The second slider called contrast, as the name says it, will increase the contrast, resulting in a sharper change between the white and black values. If we go all the way to the one, we'll get a black and white mask, as you can see here. And finally, we have the invert position button. It will change the position value to its complement, meaning that if the salary is 0.3, it will treat the position to 0 0.7, 0 0.2 will be 0 0.8, and 0 0.5 will remain at 0 0.5. Now that we understand the parameters, we can see that the most common usage of this node is to create masks based on noises. For example, by defining a position and increasing the contrast all the way to 1, or almost 1 if we want a small transition, we can create a mask to blend two materials. Let's move on to the non-uniform version. In short, what differentiates the non-uniform version from the histogram scan is that the non-uniform can use an image as an input for the position and one for the contrast meaning that instead of having a constant value like 0 0.2 in the position, like we did in the example earlier, each pixel will take the value from an input image. This allows a lot more flexibility in the node, but also is more complex and a little bit harder to understand. Let's begin by checking the node and its properties. The first thing we notice is that instead of one input, the nodes have three. The first input is the input image, as in the histogram scan. The second one is the image that will drive the position. And the third one is the image that will drive the contrast. Now in the property windows, we see two buttons and two sliders. The buttons are basically to switch between using a constant value in the slider, as in the histogram scan, or to use an image as an input. We have one button for the contrast and one for the position. By switching both buttons to false, setting the position on 0 and the contrast on 0 0.5, we get the same behavior as with the histogram scan. If we increase the position, the whitest parts of the cloud will begin to appear. The contrast is different. From 0 0.5 to 1, it will work as with the histogram scan, but from 0 0.5 to 0, it will reduce the grayscale range that the image is using. We can verify that by opening the histogram, and as we reduce the contrast, the range is getting smaller. In practical terms, what it means is that we are flattening the noise. If we go to the 3D view, we can see how, as we increase the contrast, the details pop up, and as we reduce the contrast, it gets flattened. Now let's enable the maps. First, the position. As you can see, in this case, the parts that are showing off first are defined by the whitest parts of the position map instead of the ones in the clouds to noise input. So now the behavior is different from the histogram scan. And if we enable the contrast map, the same happens. The parts where the contrast is increasing first are the whitest parts of the contrast map input instead of the ones in the clouds to noise. And this brings us to the first way to use this node, and it's to add variation to a mask. With the histogram, all the masks will have the same level of contrast and position, but now we can control which parts have more contrast or show first at a pixel level. To illustrate the concept better, I added a clause 2 as an input, some paraboloids as position, and a gradient linear 1 as contrast. If we check the results, we can see that the cloud noise shows first at the whitest part of each paraboloid, which is the center, and that the contrast is bigger at the top, where the gradient is closer to white, and lower at the bottom, where the gradient is closer to black. One way to use this node is to add damage to concrete walls. For example, here I have as input a clouds 1, as position a clouds 2, and as contrast a uniform grayscale color with a value of 42. Now one can use the position slider to define how much damage I want in the concrete wall. 
I can even have some artistic control on where to add this damage, just by creating a paraboloid, adding a transformation node and inverting it. Now we connect it to the position. And now I can define with the position node where this damage will appear. The next example is to use this node to add micro details to tile edges. The setup for this example is a fractal sum as the input, the mask of the tiles with a gradient as the position, and a purling noise as the contrast. Now we see the results. We can have all the details in the edges while leaving the rest the same, as you can see here in the 3D view. Another great way to use this node is to create water transitions. For example, if I connect a moisture noise as the input, a gradient linear as the position, and a white color as the contrast, we can get this effect of sand and water. And if we replace the gradient with a paraboloid, we can create a puddle. One of the most interesting ways to use this node is to gravelly show shapes. For example, here I have a tile sampler with a lot of parabolas with different luminance, a gradient as position, and a white color as contrast. And if we go to the results, I can use the position slider to define how much of the tile sampler I want to show from top to bottom, giving a bubble-like effect as a result. And the final example I have for today is to create a look of paint starting to peel from a wall. For this, I'm using a moisture noise as input, a uniform color with a value of 0.32 as position, and a crystal 1 as contrast. With this setup, the contrast slider will define the strength of effect, as you can see here. Remember, these are only examples of how to use it. If you know of another one, please let me know in the comments of this video. And well, that's all for now. Remember to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feedback, or idea for a tutorial, let me know in the comments. Good luck!